Hey guys, and welcome back to Until Dawn. I'm just recovering from uh, the previous twist of Josh being the psycho clown killer man. Uh, apparently he watched the Saw films once too often and uh, just thought he'd play a little game with everyone. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really sure what to think at this point, because Flame was telling me, like, off screen, it's like, if you can't trust your own eyes, what can you trust? Like, we saw Josh in massive quotation marks, get buzzsawed in half, but that was just a trick, just a ruse. So, did Beth and Hannah even really bite it at the bottom of that cliff? Who knows? I'm half expecting them to turn up as, like, evil clownesses or something. <laughs> oh, and then, of course, there's the matter of Emily not dying, and, you know, the revelation that uh, if you had chosen to save her as Matt, he would have died, and then you've got Mick Flamethrower guy over here. It's just all... It's like so much going on right now. I'm kind of it's it's hard to process it really. I would love if like McFlameflower guy was his actual name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been a bit typecast, don't you know? I'm expecting a lot of good things with a chapter title like Revelation, by the way. The name Revelation it actually comes from the choice of not hitting Josh as Chris in the last chapter, uh -huh. which it does seem like quite a random thing to have that sort of influence over it but then like given the earlier ones were influenced by answering random questions from Dr. Hill it's kind of these chapter names they're just what ifs you know so is the dude slash dudes we've seen bopping about like in the sanatorium and right here are they actually antagonistic because that guy seemed to want to save Emily from the other shadowy figure well, he's doing a lot of sort of walking around, like, it, I th I do like how they've kept him so ambiguous, and it kind of sets your preconceptions of, like, he's the only person we've really seen who isn't part of the group at this point, and so it, I kind of like that now we're at this point, we're starting to question things, you know, like, so many chapters in. It's like our own sanity, for example. I mean, I think it's because from the start of the game, um, Flamethrower Guy has been set up to look as though he is the killer. Mm, like never showing his face, hanging around with a pack of wolves and so on. Yeah, and also because like a lot of the shots of him have been with the Flamethrower or like a machete in hand or something. Just everything looks towards him being... The villain. Yeah, yeah. But then you get to this part and you suddenly start to think, oh, maybe all is not as it seems. So yeah. obviously, after the twist with Josh, who was basically pulling a John Kramer from Saw, <laughs> because in the first Saw film, quite literally, the body that's in the middle of the floor is John Kramer playing dead. Okay, thanks for the spoilers, though. It's a bloody old movie, nobody cares anymore. <laughs> wow, nobody cares. That's a bit strong, but whatever. <laughs> that's a damn good movie. Oh my god, what's going on here? There's guns and... Okay, there's not really enough to uh, figure anything out from that little snippet. Oh, I know exactly what it refers to. Will you stop cock-teasing me already? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, so much jerking, not enough climaxing. <laughs> That's one way to interpret things. Oh, well, I'm a very blunt sort of person, I guess. It was the reveal of Josh that's kind of tipped everything on its head, really, isn't it? Because, like, so many times you've... Anything seemed, like, a little bit out of ordinary, you think, oh, it's the clown guy. But now, like, we've seen the clown guy was only part of it, but there's still weird stuff happening. So it's like, now you've got to sort of widen your horizon a little bit when you're trying to work out what's what. Yeah, expected that. Of course you did. I'm getting wise to the jump scares now. And we've got some sort of, like, zombie creatures. Oh my god. There's, like, Gollum. Oh my god, it is Gollum as well. <laughs> Okay, I think they were doing some experiments at the sanatorium. I think this is where we're going. Dead power. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> my precious! Give me my precious! You're wising up to the jump scares, are you, Oh, Tom? fuck off, Flame. <laughs> You're just as bad as Richie. Uh, I feel the need to point out that there are multiple ways in which Emily can die in this sequence. Uh -huh. Um, the most common of which is that monstrosity picking her up and jamming its really long nails through her eye sockets. Oh! Jesus! 
Yep. It is brutal. Which I don't even think Emily deserves that, to be fair. But she doesn't even deserve to be harmed in any way, shape, or form. Hello! She annoys me, that's enough, right? <laughs> well, if you're a psychopath, maybe. I love the sound effect that plays during the don't move segments. Yeah, it's doing that deliberately to make you feel uneasy, so you're more likely to just jolt by, like, reaction. Ah, how do you like that big... Oh! Oh, the vision! The vision! That's what was going after Mike and Jessica. Uh-huh. So, zombie bears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not quite a bear. Rocks and fire should kill it, which of course it won't. I think this is a pretty cool sequence with the conveyor belt. Oh, definitely. And it's another sequence at which point you can kill Emily if you so choose to. Oh, this is just like the end of Heavy Rain. Hmm. Yeah, and Emily can die in that exact manner. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, basically, I think if you stay on, on that conveyor belt, and then miss the quick time event, then she will fall into the crusher and be horribly mutilated. Jesus. Ah, uh, yes, the common bolt lock. Why is it that whenever, like, she's seen just now, these things can push through the wood, like, when she was running away. So why did she put her fucking back to the wooden wall? Uh, panic, mate. Panic, I guess. I can slide down that too. I just choose not to. Whee! Oh, fun times at winter camp. Man, that must have really damaged her coccyx. Looks like it would have done some damage, but it's it's just like at this point we've seen basically everything in this area is broken. We've seen broken lifts. We've seen that swinging thing broken. Like I suppose the cable car works, but that's about it. So at this point, Emily's trapped in the forest with like Gollum chasing her. That's pretty effective as far as horror goes. Mm-hmm. Now I think from what I can recall. From the general reception of the game, it was at this point where people became slightly less fond of it. Huh. Partially. I think because it suddenly started to go in a way that they weren't quite expecting, perhaps? So instead of just being like a psychological thriller in terms of horror, it became a, a monster movie. Yeah, and I think that was what kind of turned some people off, at least. I think other people were fascinated by it. I mean, I would say that I am one of those people that is fascinated by where this goes because of what it actually starts delving into. But until we are given proper terminology to refer to these monsters, I, I will leave that be. I think the kind of reception might have been a little bit unstable because it's this whole thing of there's the two tiers. It, they were really building up this monster guy, and now we have we know what that was all about. We're only halfway through, and it's how invested were people in the stuff outside of him compared to him. Yeah. Because you know? like, I still think this stuff's pretty interesting, but I can kind of see why some people might not be too big on it. Well, human nature in and of itself, you know, just all these different personalities clashing and interacting is interesting, and then you throw, like, some kind of, like, monster into the mix, and, uh, kind of dilutes that a little bit. Sometimes it enhances it. It depends on the writing, really. Oh, Jesus Christ. Am I imagining things? Oh, I I've, I've could have sworn I saw something moving around in the background. Mm, I think that's this game just being a little bit clever with its lighting to keep you on edge even during the quieter scenes. Mm, that's a nasty welt that Chris had in his head back there. Mm, like, this far into the night now, they've all got like little knocks, grazes, scratches, and. Bites. Yeah, bites. It's understandable. They've been through a hell of a lot tonight. I don't know. We should check it out. I got your back. Yeah, you're back and only you're back. I don't have a gun. I don't even have a bat. Just got your bag. I laugh that thing comes crashing through the window and like Josh is riding on it. Oh, it's flamethrower guy! I'm expecting visitors at this hour. Okay. I'm 
door. You ready? You ready? Just do it already. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bad up, Chris. Open the door. Well, I think that's less good. You do the door. But how can I have your back if I go in front of you? <laughs> just do it. No, just one more little cue to you. Well, he didn't have to knock it open. Well, I mean, just walking slowly through the door is not quite dramatic enough. Okay, he's pulled his bandana down. We can see his face clearly. Okay, everybody, just calm down. Now, just move over there. Go on, move. Let me say what I came to say. Okay, so he's friendly. Nice. You don't, you, yeah, you don't usually he's get, like a nice guy. Yeah, you don't usually get that when they're toting a flamethrower and maybe a show. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with him and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? Oh, we're responsible. You hold on to your horses. I don't take kindly. Has he dropped a little bit too much too quickly? His man. What, do you have the deed or something? I'm very surprised to hear that. <laughs> well, the mountain don't belong to me, it's true. Well, don't say it belongs to you, then. Is that any mixed signals here? I don't think you understand how dibs works. <laughs> the Wendigo, really? Yes, the Wendigo. Yes. Richie, what's a Wendigo? I know the name, I'm just not sure what type of creature it is. So... A Wendigo um, is a cannibalistic monster or evil spirit native to the northern forests of the Atlantic coast and Great Lakes region of both the United States and Canada. It's from um, Algonquian folklore. Mm, so Native American. Yeah, um, so they may appear as a monster with some characteristics of a human or as a spirit who has possessed a human being and made them become monstrous. Interesting. Um, so, it is obviously historically associated with cannibalism, murder, insatiable greed, and cultural, well, cultural taboos against such behaviours. Um, because of the legend and stuff, um, it has lent its name to the disputed modern medical term Wendigo Psychosis, uh, which is considered by psychiatrists to be a form of culture-bound syndrome, with symptoms such as an intense craving for human flesh and a fear of becoming a cannibal. Those two seem to kind of contradict each other. Yeah, so... Like, it, it, wants it's the human flesh? No, I don't want the human flesh. <laughs> it's interesting because if you remember when we were walking around the sanatorium as Mike, there were like them notes about how it looked like the bodies are being scratched away by fingernails and possibly eaten. Ugh. So you're seeing a little bit of a connection going on there. I mean, the thing that I find particularly fascinating about Until Dawn is that they really went all the way with trying to make their Wendigos sort of almost accurate to the folkloric descriptions. Because, I mean, there's a piece here by an, on Wikipedia by a guy called Basil Johnson, who was an Ojibwe teacher and scholar from Ontario. So he describes the Wendigo uh, as being gaunt to the point of emaciation, its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones. With its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash grey of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. While its had were tattered and bloody, unclean and suffering from separations of the flesh, the Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odour of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. Lovely. Yes! Yes! Oh. OTP! OTP! <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Looks like I've got a reason to come back now. Peace. I'm off to shoot a Native American monster. So tell me, you're the expert on these things. What's uh, what, what's a guy got to know? You can just be careful. You can tell him your name, like Stranger of Brackets, is a little bit unfriendly. But what if Stranger is his name? You never know. Oh yeah. Shoot it with the shotgun before it's dead. Well, you've been shooting it a long time. Oh, I think we're getting important Wendigo lore. Trademark here, guys. Going to shut up for a little bit if you don't mind. Kill it. They don't like fire. I don't like fire. They fear it. Then it can kill them if you have to. Their skin is like it's like tough armor unless you burn it off first. It's gross. I'm keeping an eye out for that ashy fucker. Well, 
Climbing through trees. Now you're back to the original cycle of now you know what you're expecting to jump out at you, so you've now got right on edge waiting for it. Hmm. I, I kind of see what you mean then, Rich, about it taking away from stuff a little bit. Because now I know what's out there, it's no longer mysterious. I'll, I'll no longer think it's like a bear with a knife coming to stab us and steal our wallets. Exactly. It's it's the whole typical horror movie monster problem of once you show the monster, is it as scary anymore? Yeah, I think that's why the thing was so effective because it could literally be anything. Exactly. I think that might have been why, for the first half of the game, they sort of had the two different scare sort of sources working alongside each other because it was either these Wendigo or the. Josh doing his shit with the clown mask. Oh dear. Well, we've only looked, the Wendigo ate him. <laughs> it's all he deserved. Oh, I sense evil in the air. I know that personally. See these scratches over my eyes? Oh yeah, pure Wendigo, baby. Well, I suppose he's the only guy on the mountain outside of these lots, so he's probably learned a few things over time about him, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Dude, look at the wind effect on like the fur of his hoodie. It is really cool, yeah. I suppose it's not really a hoodie, it's a jacket. Sorry, I get my upper body clothing terminology mixed up sometimes. It's more of a parka, really, isn't it? Okay, Mr. I know clothes. It's a fucking coat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. That one was actually really sudden to throw you into that, and I actually think, although I have grief with these particular things, that's probably a cool way to use it if you're going to. I like the balls on this stranger guy. He, he knows and fears the Wendigo, but he also respects it to a certain degree because he understands its power. Oh, jeez. Oh. Did he just cut his throat? Yeah. Damn, that was like pres- Oh, my- Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're up against now, Chris. <laughs> Time to run, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, you ain't really got many options, have you? Like, this is actually well done. They've built up that the Wendigo's weak. Weakness is the fire, but now all we've got is the gun that can only sort of temporarily knock them back. So, like, this is pretty intense chase sequence. What is a shotgun blast if not a small burst of fire? Yeah, but it doesn't seem quite as lethal as the flamethrower would have been, but that guy couldn't win. Dude, House of the Dead 5 looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him would be uh, House of the Dead 3, that was the one with shot. Is. That game was sick, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, obviously, if Chris misses any of those shots, the Wendigo will kill him. I assume it's very bloody and whatnot. He, well, yeah, because basically what happens is that the Wendigo shoves its hand through his throat uh. and separates his head from it, his body. Okay. And then just drops the head on the floor before dragging it away. Uh... Wait, who was that who was dragged? That was Josh. Huh. Okay. Guess he doesn't want the stranger, he only goes for guys with heads. So, Rich, you were telling me back during the saw, like, you gotta shoot yourself or Ashley sequence. If you choose to shoot Ashley, Chris won't make it back from that segment. Yes, basically, what happens is that Ashley stands at the door and doesn't let him in. Oh, okay. She basically lets him die. <laughs> wow, well, pay much? I know, but yeah, it's it it's a it's a horrifying moment, certainly. Well, that's not exactly anything new at this point, is it? Let's be frank here. It's very true. That's a good job. Josh had this like super secret bunker, so we can keep track of all stuff going on. 
It's a good job Josh had like connections to basically fucking everywhere from this. We've got the cable car down the bottom of the mountain. We've got like go underground to the sanatorium. I don't know, Mike. It's possible. What's like, possible? what kind of purpose? Like, this must have been it. This couldn't have all been Josh. So, what kind of purpose would these links have been had outside of trying to hunt down your friends? Huh. All right. What have we got here? Is it a book of secrets? It's a book of secrets. Ah, I love secret books. Well, last time we saw a secret book, it was the Kama Sutra, so I'm not sure whether it's a totally appropriate secret book. <laughs> no, that's not a secret book. That's a magic book, my friend. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. What is that? I was down there. It was horrible. Really, really bad. I found these plans. They knew the mine was a death trap, but they let the miners keep working. Oh my god, did they uncover the Wendigo? Focus on how we're gonna get the fuck out of here, please? I'm just saying, it's weird how much crazy shit's gone on up here. What's weird is that there's a tunnel leading from the lodge to the sanatorium, see? That's how I got back here. Yeah, that really is weird. Why is it connected to the manor or the lodge? Hmm, it, it's just, like, I get they were a sort of weird rich family, but, like, I don't think that's... It doesn't really make sense at all for there to be them links. There definitely doesn't, but oh well. It's not. Is it a vampire? Does it turn people into Wendigos? Well, nobody knows right now, do they? Yeah. Well, you should probably like at least like lock her up. This isn't the Walking Dead. You don't know that people are going to turn into Wendigos if they're bed or scratched. Can you take that risk? True, yeah. <laughs> Just one bite or scratch from a bitch nails and you could be a Wendigo too. Well, it's a family of golems. And we'll just remember the most important thing of all, at least it was Emily. You can't be down here with us. What? Mike? You gotta go. Mike's turning more and more into like Nathan Drake the more I see him. I don't know if it's just like the heroic camera angles they're using or whatever. I would imagine because he got these sort of cooler parts of the story earlier on, like, you know, going around the sanatorium and he got to do the shit with the wolves and that, and oh, like, yeah. he gets the cool stuff, whereas the others have been sort of trekking around being scared of shit. Also, he's got the jacket, it pulls it all together. The jacket makes a man. better about sending me to my death since you know there's a Wendigo out there ready to rip me to pieces like it did with... Okay, oh my god, will you just go? Go, get out of here! Yeah, go! Okay, well, 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 Mike, calm down. I will smite the Wendigo! You're gonna shoot me? Like me? This is the safe room, M. By very definition, we should be safe in here! As long as you're in it. Not for us. Don't, don't do this! Oh, oh, I think it is a choice coming? Oh, yeah. oh! Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that is... <laughs> A pretty fucking brutal death. I went with shooting her because I didn't on my first run and I was curious just how bloody it would actually be. And that didn't fail. That didn't fail to deliver that. <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing that disappoints me is then we didn't get to hear the best line in the game. Uh, which is Emily saying, Understand the palm of my hand, bitch. Okay, I don't really get the context for that, but it's pretty funny out of context. Okay, I'm gonna get the key from Josh. Yeah, you you go hunt down Josh, who is basically dinner for the Wendigo right now. Are you just gonna leave her there? Well, what else can you really do with her? <laughs> God, imagine if they need to check the map or something. That's gonna be awkward. Hey, uh, yeah, let's just move her over <laughs> a bit. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> Yeah, has anyone got some wipes or anything they need to wash the blood off this map? Just put a tarp over or something, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, where'd they go? Yeah. I was definitely not lying about that. Oh, Jesus. What would it look like? Like, 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 a, like a person, only... What secrets lay hid inside this book? Could we have this document on cannibalism? That could come in useful. How cannibalism causes the Wendigo curse. Of course, you gotta be like 
hungry for anything if you get trapped on the mountain side. Mm-hmm. This whole idea of like the how much of a societal deviance it is that that is the last result that whatever caused these Wendigos to be was obviously pretty fucking extreme. So we have the Cree tribe who lived in the mountains. I'm just picking up what I can here while it's still on the screen. I will go slightly into probably why the uh, the Cree are referenced here, but there's not really. In, I don't think there's not quite enough time to do it. Okay, so it specifically says a shotgun will keep them at bay, and it knows how to hunt us because it was born from a human. That's sweet. Killing a Wendigo should be the last resort. Death releases into the air when a Wendigo is killed. Oh, nice, the Death Spirit. Yeah, because basically what it is, is that it's a spirit possesses a human body. Either, it's generally because it is forced to eat the flesh of another human being. And so it then, you, the person then turns into a Wendigo. I just read that the bite is harmless. Oh, no. So they killed Emily for nothing. Yep. Jesus flame, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you've picked up earlier on, I really don't like him, so... Well, she's sitting back there with a murdered O-face. How do you feel now? This is the least annoying she's been the whole game. (laughs) What the (laughs) fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) But yeah, so you know that that wonderful line that I told you about? Um, Basically... Ashley ends up apologising profusely to Emily, and it says something along the lines of, I didn't understand. And so then Emily's just like, understand the palm of my hand, bitch. (laughs) Oh, nice. Best moment in the game by far. I'll still argue the violent murder was a little bit above it. I think I need to keep tabs on you from now on, Flame, to be honest. (laughs) (laughs) Where exactly do these like little sessions take place? Is the Wendigo working for the Doctor? What's going on exactly? These all take place in Josh's head. Ah. That would make sense. Because obviously he, he's insane. Hmm, well, wasn't able to pick up from that, like apart from you know the whole play acting as a clown and acting the Saw movies, but you know, now that you've told me, I get it. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Now, something that I found out that was really fascinating is that apparently if you choose, it's either chapter 2 or chapter 1, that zombies are your fear, um, the Doctor will, like, he'll start to deteriorate. So, like, he'll have, like, wounds in his face and, like, he'll look like he's decomposing. Ah, because of the zombie fear. Yeah, so it's just like, wow. Yeah, because it... These sessions do play up to what you say, because like, I think I referred to being like having a fear of snakes, and after that he had the cobra on his desk. <laughs> Not the most creative way to utilise my fear, but whatever. Yeah. It's like, you got to face up to it somehow, mate. Why did you hurt them? But they didn't hurt you, Joshua. Not intentionally. Now, he doesn't actually say that out loud, which, yeah, does give credence to the fact that the Doctor's inside his head. Mm. Well, I mean, also, you've got the fact of the way the room looks and the fact that it's been changing every single time we've been here, but... True, but he might just be an extreme decorator, you don't know. The <laughs> <laughs> time and place for that. Yes, for the PlayStation 4. So, <laughs> and now it's game over. Oh yeah. 